Hello everyone, and welcome to a new series going over the history of characters from the Mortal Kombat series. Today's subject is the Dragon King himself, one of the baddest bads of the MK universe, Onaga. <laughs> Onaga's history is an interesting one, but like all things, let's start from the beginning, and by beginning, I mean of time. Onaga's story is an old one, and before we even get to Onaga, we need to talk about the original creators of the MK Universe, the Elder Gods and the One Being. The One Being is considered to be the progenitor of the realms of Mortal Kombat, the six major realms of Earth Realm, Nether Realm, Outworld, Order Realm, Chaos Realm, and Adenia, all and all of the other smaller realms. According to an ancient legend in the beginning of time, there only existed the One Being and the Elder Gods. The One Being fed on the essences of the Elder Gods, but eventually, the Elder Gods defeated the One Being, and in the efforts to weaken the One Being's near infinite power, the Elder Gods separated the One Being's con consciousness into the realms and created six Kamidogu, which held the essence of the One Being. The legend decrees that if one were to obtain all six Kamidogu, Within the stake, with the sacred amulet, he or she would be granted unlimited power, ultimate power, as well. As this legend says, the realms being created spawn many different races, including one of the strongest races to be born, the dragons. Many believe that the dragons were descendants of the gods themselves, because of the many similarities to each other, such as the elder gods represented as dragons, when they come into their true form. Many of them, because of this, were regarded in high esteem, and even aligned themselves with gods, Orin and Karo are two examples who were aligned with the Edenian god Argus, and were assigned the mission to awaken Tavid and Dagon during the events of Armageddon. Unlike them, doing a sort of messenger for the gods, uh, Onaga was different. Unlike the others leaving Outworld, Onaga stayed behind to become stronger in order to rule Outworld, become its true ruler. During this time, Onaga was one of the first people to learn about necromancy and be able to use it proficiently. With this power, he created his own undead army devoted to him. With this power, he is able to resurrect his army every time they are taken down. Now, one thing I would like to touch on is Onaga's title, Dragon King. We don't know if this is a self-appointed or an actual title uh, of being a real king. Either way, the power he was obtaining and the so-called immortal army he has amassed leads him into the crosshairs of the Elder Gods because of the belief that Onaga may be a vessel for the One Being's return, although they couldn't be more wrong. Onaga was in fact so strong he mentally fought off the One Being's influence, being that the One Being at this point is physically dead, but uses its influence throughout the realms, uh, remains in the races he created. This being the case, the One Being planned to use those he deemed as vessels to return through them. Onaga, however, seemed to be stronger than the One Being had expected. Those tainted by the One Being wish to merge the realms together, because in doing so, they are able to become him. That didn't seem to interest him, however. Instead found an interest in something far more valuable to him. Immortality. His only hang-up in power being is that he is well aware that he can still die. Understandably, he wants to keep his title of ruler of Outworld for as long as possible, if not forever. Despite his advisor, Shao Kahn, urging that merging the realms is the only way to achieve this, being obviously corrupted by the One Being, and explains his further actions later. This said, way towards immortality was to be uh, his way of immortality was to be baptized in the blood of a dragon egg. As dragon eggs are very rare, this was no small task. Hoping to gain eternal life, he ordered the last known dragon egg to be kept, hoping that the blood of an infant great dragon, the last of the forgotten great dragons, would grant him immortality. However, he died before this could be fulfilled. Shao Kahn, one of his chief advisors, had him poisoned, and took over his rule of Outworld. His army, however, was kept in a mummified state after their ritual mass suicide, and at the last tomb in the Golden Desert, outside the obscure Sarna ruins. This army was considered undefeatable because Onaga possessed the innate power to raise the dead by means of constant resurrection during battles. His army truly was undefeatable. During that millennia that followed, Onaga was apparently forgotten. 
quite some time before Liu Kang's victory over Goro and Shang Tsung at the Shaolin Mortal Kombat tournament. Onaga communicated through death to Shujinko through an avatar named Damashi. He persuaded Shujinko to embark on a quest to unite the Kamidogo, Kamidogu, claiming he was carrying out the will of, an el of the Elder Gods, as well as granting him the power to learn the fighting techniques of warriors he encountered. Shujinko readily embarked on his quest, beginning to set in emo emotions events that Onaga hoped would lead to his eventual return in power. Additionally, a sect of holy men still dedicated to have been guarding the egg of the last great dragon in the chamber of molten lava inside a hollow volcano in Outworld. During the events of MK2, they captured the Outworld elemental Blaze, who was forced to guard the egg until it was ready to hatch and revive the king. A few years later, Quan Chi and Shang Tsung, the Deadly Alliance, used their powers to resurrect Onaga's army at Shang Tsung's new pal palace. Outside the young warrior, warrioress Li Mei's home village of Sun Do, their plan was to use this army to conquer Outworld and eventually all the other realms as well. Raiden embarked on a mission with the Earthrealm warriors to Outworld to stop their plans, but his attempt ultimately failed. His comrades were slain and he himself was defeated by the Deadly Alliance in person. However, their victory was short-lived. The vampire Natara convinced Reptile to help her access the chamber of the last dragon egg. The chamber also held an orb that would separate Outworld from the Vampire Realm. After she destroyed the orb, Natara left, but Reptile, feeling betrayed, arrived almost as soon as she transported herself to her native realm. At that moment, the egg hatched and sent its energy into Reptile, which fulfilled the prophecy of Onaga's return. The Dragon King, as such, used the transformed body of Reptile as a host, after he had gained the ability to rise himself from the dead through Shujinko's actions. Just as his army stood st ready to receive commands from Quan Chi, who had emerged victorious in a battle with his former ally, Shang Tsung, Onaga returned. Even the combined might of Shang Tsung, Quan Chi, and Raiden was not sufficient to defeat him. Raiden's desperate last measure was to use a self-destruct magic that released, um, released his godly essence, but that only succeeded in destroying Onaga's army, and presumably the two sorcerers. Onaga was unaffected due to being res resistant to all forms of magic. It was now in possession of the amulet Quan Chi previously held. It was at this time in which Shujinko, finally realizing he had been duped, took action. He traveled through the realms in order to find recruits to fight Onaga. All these warriors came from extremely diverse origins, but Shujinko planned to unite them to fight this enormous threat. It was now in possession of the sixth Kamidogu, and attempting to unite all of them into one. Unbeknownst to Onaga, Shujinko had united many warriors and absorbed their fighting abilities, and was planning to a an attack on the K Dragon King's stronghold. Shujinko had destroyed each of the Kamidogu, giving him the opportunity to eliminate Onaga. But as Shujinko landed the final blow, Onaga's soul was for forced from Reptile's body and dragged down to the Nether Realm, where he was bound by Nightwolf. He remained there for a long time until he was discovered by Lord Shinnok, who had also been trapped there. The Fallen Elder God proposed that he would give Onaga his place at the Outworld Throne in exchange for his help in returning his own power. Onaga reluctantly agreed for the time being. Shinnok informed Onaga about Blaze and the godlike power that would be given upon whoever defeated him in combat. He proposed that the Dragon King join with Quan Chi, Shang Tsung, and Shao Kahn so that he may stand a better chance at attaining the power. Onaga did not trust Shinnok and suspected that the former Elder God had something else up his sleeve. But with no other alternative to escape the nether realm, he accepted. Satisfied, Shinnok opened a portal to Outworld and sent Onaga back through, where he met with Quan Chi, Shang Tsung, and Shao Kahn, and allied with them. However, Onaga vowed that he would take Blaze's prize for himself, and would destroy everyone who ever stood in his way. However, Onaga's desire for revenge against Shao Kahn proved to be greater than his desire to gain Blaze's prize. When Shao Kahn was knocked towards the edge of the Pyramid of Argus, Onaga grabbed him and flew far away from the pyramid. His former advisor managed to escape and return to the battle, and Onaga was killed at some point during the battle. We know this because Shao Kahn we see return to the Pyramid of Argus is what we see in the beginning of Mortal Kombat 9. So for the most part, that was Onaga. For now, of course, there has been a few mentions of him throughout modern day MK, but besides a comic that hinted at his return, but was cancelled, we have never seen him in action since Armageddon. But hopefully MK1 might have a surprise for us, as it seems Onaga's undead army may be back. I hope you all enjoyed, and if you want to hear more about Mortal Kombat's history, or other history videos, please check out the pinned video at the top, 
Uh, if not, please drop a sub like, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Anyways, be good people. Bye.